Bonjour, Hello, Hanan. Hi, Rob. Good morning. Good morning. You're good. Good. Great Thursday. Yeah, great Thursday. And great what Thursday. What do you have today? Well, today I'll be taking us to Ghana, actually. And Ghana, like they say, the first word tourists usually learn is Akwaba, which means welcome. Mm -hmm. Ghana has a rich um, treasure made up of 16 uh, national parks and resource reserves and wildlife sanctuary that are always open all through the year. Among the top tourist destinations in Ghana, we have the Kakum National Park, the Kokodal, um, Paga Pokodai Pond, and the Mole National Park. You have the Bumwari Kente Weaving Village, you have the Bumbury uh, Butterfly Sanctuary, you have the famous Lake Volta, the largest man made Volta. Uh, lake in the world and different Muslim and Muslims but today we're going to be highlighting just a few. Mole National Park for example is Ghana's largest and um, best national park. It's located in the northern region. It offers visitors that close encounter with white elephants. Here it holds um, viable, a viable and interesting population of large and small mammals including about 94 uh, different mammal species, over 300 bird species and 9 amphibians and 33 reptile species. Another attraction to look out for actually in, um, is Paga Crocodile Pond which is located in the northeastern border of Ghana. It's a sacred um, sanctuary, crocodile sanctuary, although crocodile is known as wild creature but amazingly the crocodiles in Paga are friendly and they coexist with the Inhabitants there, yeah, they do. Mm. The uh, the friendly relationship between this um, crocodiles and the inhabitants here continues to baffle the minds of so many, and this is in contrast with the um, perception that crocodiles are dangerous. But mm -hmm. it's a customary. One th good thing you should learn is that the customary it's a customary offense to harm, to kill, or to show any sign of disrespect to cro crocodiles in this region. Okay. It's once a, a sacrifice is offered. You see people playing around, uh, especially kids playing among the back of the crocodile, even wow. holding their tails. That remains a mystery to many of us. But it's, <laughs> it's just, a mystery for it's just yeah, yeah. It's perfectly normal to these people in this region. <laughs> you should probably visit and go there. Mm -hmm. And now, yeah, you would like to? No, that is juju. That's juju. <laughs> no, maybe. Well, maybe. Work. Yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe that's maybe it could be. But then, and now we have um, the Bongwere Kinte Weaving Village. Kente is a colorful Ghanaian fabric, a traditional fabric, which is one um, mostly on important occasions. Kente, now Ghana's national cloth, is an, and is an undercraft that has won worldwide recognition. There are many types of Kente with uh, its own symbolism and name, which, which tell the story, the culture, and the social um, practices of the weaver of the clothes. The aesthetic beauty of Kente is affected by the color of symbolism. Colors are chosen both for their symbolic effect or their visual effect. The weaver has a choice and it could be it could be influenced by its tradition. Gender plays a major role here as the women they prefer um, brighter colors like pink, purple, um, light yellow, light pink, light green or light blue. And the men tend towards the darker color, colors like black, um, dark brown, dark um, brown, yeah, mm -hmm. dark blue and dark um, green. And sometimes um, orange as well, like you have on the screen. You know, in the past, you have the um, the older folks. They are usually the ones wearing um, kente right. because people were a bit afraid of you know having to cut the fabric. It's quite difficult, difficult. to make, and it's, it's quite it's and it's quite heavy too. So we have, but now people are going. Belle, yeah, enfin c'est une belle matière, yeah. très jolie couleur, et les, les jeunes portent beaucoup pour les mariages maintenant. Yes, en Côte d'Ivoire également. Yes, mm -hmm. now they do that. Mm -hmm. And now one thing, one and if there's something you have to discover in Ghana, that would be the cuisine. It's a contemporary tourism. It's a part of contem contemporary tourism in Ghana now, and Ghana has a rich, a mm -hmm. vibrant food culture, from the very popular street food of Wache to the controversy in Chinese, but colorful jollof rice. There's so much to sample and enjoy from. You can join the nomadic food experience tour and enjoy the wide uh, variety of meals, including banki, banku, the grilled tilapia fish, red red fufu, and light soup or motuo with granite soup. You can be sure of having a delicious and tasteful dessert or snack too. The basis of Ghanaian um, dish is something that looks like a thick porridge or puri. A certain food made that make up um, the Ghanaian diet de depends on the um, region in which the people come from. People from the north, for example, prefer to, you know, they eat frequently um, millet, um, corn, and um, yam. And then when you move towards the south and uh, the west, you have more people eating plantain, cassava, and cocoa yam. That looks good, doesn't it? Oh, I look. 
beautiful. Vous avez encore mis l'eau à la bouche. Euh, yeah. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> Merci à Folake. On se retrouve aujourd'hui. Thank you very much, Folake. See you next week. In today's no comment, we head to Las Vegas, where hundreds gathered at, the, at Donald Trump's hotel a few hours before the final presidential campaign. Several vans serving Mexican food, food were formed, which organizers call the walls of taco trucks against Donald Trump. Le mur des taco trucks, regardez.